This is the 10th video in the scripting series, and today I'm going to cover 8 functions that you'll commonly use in your scripts. I'm going to cover clone, destroy, wait for child, find first child, find first child, which is a, is a, get children, and get descendants. In the workspace, I have this house model, it's called house, and then I also have this script. Inside the script, I have this house variable, which is the house in the workspace. The first function we're going to cover is clone. Clone makes an exact copy of any instance. So in this case, we have our house and we typed house colon clone. This function clone returns an exact copy of our instance. In this case, our instance is our house. So clone house is our new house, but there is one difference. The parent is not set. Before, when you just make this copy, the parent of clone house is equal to nil. So if we didn't set the parent, we would never see this copy. That's why down here, I'm setting the parent equal to the workspace. Now, as I said, the attributes are all exactly the same. So that's why I'm also shifting it by 100 in the X direction. I'm changing the C frame and I'm adding 100 to it. That way we don't have two houses that are exactly on top of each other. So let's run the script and see what happens. As you can see, we have two houses now. This is the original and then this is the copy that's moved 100 over. The next function we have is destroy, and destroy does exactly what you think it does as well. It just destroys whatever instance you have. So in this case, destroy is destroying our clone, but we're also waiting three seconds so that we can actually see it happen. As you can see, we have our clone house, and then it's gone. The next function we'll cover is wait for child. Wait for child waits for something to exist. So in this case, we're waiting for the first floor of the house to exist, the first floor right here. And you might be thinking, well, looking at this, we can see that it exists, so why do we have to wait? Well, on the server, you don't. So in this case, I don't have to use it because I have a normal script. But for a client, if this was a local script, that's when I'd have to use it. Wait for child is commonly used when you don't need to use it. So right now, I'm actually using it when I don't need to use it as well. But this is just an example. So wait for child is only needed in local scripts. The reason it's only needed in local scripts is that items are duplicated from the server to the client. When a script runs on the server, everything already exists. But when a script runs on the client, there might be some things that haven't loaded yet. Roblox doesn't guarantee the time or order in which objects are replicated from the server to the client. This can cause scripts to break when indexing objects that don't exist yet. So if we didn't use this wait for child and we just typed first floor here instead, and this of course was a local script. This will work in the script we have right now because it's just a normal script. But if this was a local script and we did this, there could be some issues because if first floor hasn't loaded yet, then this will be nil and we can't try to index an object that doesn't exist. So that's why it's extremely important to use wait for child when you're in a local script. The next function we're gonna cover is find first child and find first child and wait for child work in a similar way. They can actually be used interchangeably, but there is one difference and that difference is that find first child, if it doesn't find what it's looking for immediately, it just returns nil. So in this case, if we didn't find the roof immediately, then this would just return nil and roof would be nil. One use of this function could be that if you had you know, multiple roofs and you're looping through them, you could concatenate a number at the end. So maybe you, know, you have roof one, you, you concatenate uh, one on there and do something with that roof one, then you go to roof two, roof three, and so on. Obviously you'd want to do this in a loop and this would probably be some variable, you know, some variable roof num, and then you could loop through and make some change to all roofs. So that's just an example of where that might be useful. Looking for a part and maybe there's like a, a number after and you, you're getting each one, roof one, roof two, roof three, part one, part two, part three. The next function we'll cover is find first child, which is a, and this works just like find first child, but instead of looking for a part name, we're looking for an instance. So in this case, we're looking for anything that's an instance smoke. So this could be something else like part, it'll find any part, any fire, any sparkles, anything of a certain instance or class. So in this case, we're looking in the house and finding the first child, which is a smoke, something that is a smoke class. And here, as you can see in the chimney, this is within house, within roof, within chimney, within this smoke part, we have a smoke object. Now, if we just ran this without this true right here, this function would actually return nil because it wouldn't find the smoke. 
uh, because without that true, find first child, which is A, this will only look at first floor, roof, and base. None of those are smoke objects or of the class smoke, so this would return nil. But what that true does right here, true says look recursively or look all the way down and check to see if it's in anything. So by adding true, we'll look through everything in first floor, everything in roof, and everything in base. So it would look in roof, it would look in the chimney, and then it would also look to see if it's in smoke part, and it would finally find it in smoke part right here. Last, we're gonna cover three functions in one. We're gonna cover is a, get children, and get descendants. Right here, I'm getting the children of the house model. What that does is it returns a table of all of the children of this model. So over here, we can see the children are just the first floor, the roof, and the base. It's nothing inside of these first floor models or the roof model or the base model, or base part rather. It's only these three objects right here. If we wanted to go below and get everything, so get all these models inside the first floor, all the parts inside of it as well, that's where we use get descendants. Get descendants also returns a table, but instead of just a table of the children, it's a table of everything. And you can use get children and get descendants on more than just models. You can use it on parts and anything, any instance. So right here, this is what the table would look like for the get children. It would only have the house.firstfloor, the house.roof, and the house.base. But this get descendants function right here this would be a much bigger table. That's why I didn't type it all out because it would include everything. The first floor it would include the model, everything inside the model and so on and so forth. Now I'm gonna show you how to use both of these functions in combination with the is a function. So here I have a loop and I'm looping through all of the children in the house. So since we have the variable up there, I'm actually gonna replace this. And now we're looping through all of this right here, this for table. We're looping through the house dot first floor, the roof, and the base. And then we're getting all those objects. So this would be one object, another, and another. And we're checking to see if it is a part. So this works just like the find first child, which is a function. You can replace this part right here, this string, with any instance or class. And this will return true if the object is this class or false otherwise. So if this object is a part, then this whole function will return true. So the is a function returns a Boolean. In this case, this will return false for the first floor and false for the roof because those are both models, but it will return true for house.base because base is a part. And because it will return true for base, the transparency of the base will be set to 0.5. When we run the game, you can see that the base is 0.5 in transparency, but only the base. The reason only the base is set to 0.5 in transparency is because we're only getting the children. If we want to get every part, that's when we need to use the descendants. So if we change this out with descendants, now you can see that every part in our model is 0.5 in transparency. Thanks for watching. Comment any questions below, like the video if it helped you out, and subscribe for more in the future.